Hi everyone, this is Nikita from RuPaul's Drag Race season 12. Today we're gonna be recreating my cape look. I'm excited to do it. Watch me go from this to this. I usually use a prosthetic adhesive to block my brows because it really gives me the security that my brow is going to stay covered the whole time. I like to use my loose powder with a little bit of tint because it really gives an extra color and it helps starting to remove the actual color of the brow. It might sound painful but it's actually very relaxing to do that. So now that I've done that, you want to use your main foundation. I like to use a um, lighter. Basically going to reactivate uh, the hydration that is in there to have it a little bit less dry. And now this is the time where you do not look cute anymore for the rest of the tutorial. You're welcome. Because I'm French but I do have a very strong Spanish heritage, this can be a big issue for drag. So what I do is that I like to use a beard blocking that is kind of like an orange concealer. Girl, when I started drag, trust me, she was not fish. All right, so now that I covered half my face with the foundation, I'm gonna start to slowly blend it and start to contour and highlight. I don't know if you guys have the same issue as me, but every time that I apply my foundation, my nose starts running, and people have been saying that I might be allergic to makeup. But because that was the truth that I didn't want to hear, I keep going. Do not forget your ears. There's nothing worse than having like a red ear when your foundation is perfect. I didn't put any on the forehead because I'm gonna start to contour. I'm using a very dark, warmish chocolate and that's gonna help me to really reduce the area that I don't want to highlight. Female persons have smaller forehead, smaller nose, slimmer jaw and you want to recreate that. And we erase the work of God just for the night. Should be looking like that and leaving kind of like a croissant. How cliche. You just go here. Know that if you do a lot of this, your foundation will look perfect from the front, but once you're going to look on the side, all the tricks will be showing. So you want to be mindful also of the foundation color that you choose and your blending skills. So now I'm using a concealer that is probably one or two shades lighter than me. So you want to highlight also here and link those two triangles. That's going to make those two areas even more seamless. You want to highlight a little bit in the chin and you want to cut your cheek contour. You don't want to put too much otherwise you're going to look like a, a swordfish. You know, no judgment, you can. It's just not my look for today. You see like my chin, all the contour that I did completely disappeared. But if I use my contour sponge and I just go over it, oh, it's back. You see? I like to use my highlight sponge on my eyelid. It's gonna be a nice primer for my foundation, my eyeshadow. So now you should be having a nice contour, some messy hair, and then a nice highlight area. I'm gonna use my contour shade that is a little bit darker than what I use around my face but just because you want to really snatch that nose. So I like to use a little brush that is in that shape and I'm basically gonna link the older shape of my natural brow right here and then go and snatch snap up and then you want to also make the tip of your nose disappear a little bit. And then what I like to do is that I use a brush with a little bit of my lighter concealer and then I just redefine the bone of my nose right here and right here, blend right there. I like to add a little bit more highlight just because you know you want, to, you want the makeup to pop on stage so what I do is that I use straight white and I'm just gonna go and 
dab. Ooh, that's wide. You know, I like to use different shade of highlight and different shade of contour to have the most like defined uh, result. You're just gonna go and dip, 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 dip. So now that I've done that, I'm just gonna clean the nose. You wanna be careful with this one because if you go and blend it a little bit on the side, you literally gonna remove all your work. Just for this line, you wanna make sure that it stays where it was positioned and then you're just gonna go and blend the edges. So now I'm gonna use my loose powder, my sponge, and I'm just gonna put all the powder that I can in there and bake. Again, don't forget this is a stage makeup. This is not a regular, I go to the office from nine to five makeup. So obviously you would look crazy at 12 p.m. wearing this, but at 12 a.m. with the right amount of shots, you'll look just fine. And then I'm just gonna use a brush and go over very quickly the contour. Now let's start to work on my number one enemy, the brow. One is always adopted, the other one is always very upset or shady. So for that, what I do is that I use actually just my regular contour and I use a little brush like this and that's gonna help me to basically frame my face. So my natural brow is here and so basically I'm gonna start my brow at the middle of my natural brow and then go on top of my natural brow right like over here and then for the tail I just let the brush guide it. Ooh she's upset. For this particular look I'm gonna create a small brow with a small tail. As for my cape look, my main inspiration was Joanna Bark. So as you know guys, I'm French and I wanted to uh, pay homage on each of my looks to a very powerful woman. And so when I got the theme, the first name that popped in my head was, of course, the leader of the revolution. And also, the brow looked crazy right now, but I will show you that I don't really care about the shape until I clean around the edges. Now you can see like this is a very tiny tail, a very big stomach. That's basically my winter body. So what you do, don't be scared, concealer, and we're just gonna clean under it. So gonna go here. Sometimes you will see people online that would do it in a matter of second and you will still be there at 2 a.m. trying to figure out what was wrong. That's usually me. So find what works for you, and then go with it. I like to use my little highlight. And now you want to do the same on the opposite side, which we know is not gonna happen. And then once you arrive here, I like to create like little strokes just to basically recreate hair. For this look, I wanted to create something that was kind of like a reverse smoky, so we're gonna have like a very highlighted crease, but with a very smoky under eye. I wanted to give that power to Joan of Arc's eye. I'm gonna use some of like those transition colors in order to create really a shadow. That doesn't really look like makeup, it almost looks like it's where my brow bone starts. So you're gonna go at the head of your brow, very freshly designed brow, almost at the very tip of your contour, and you're gonna start to create the shadow. You see you start seeing that shadow? I took this trick from, by analyzing how Matthew used to do RuPaul's face, you know? Like there's a lot of looks of RuPaul where it literally looked like he was in drag but he had no makeup on because he was so nude and neutral. And I was so fascinated by how it was possible to recreate a, basically a fake face with no very impactful colors. And then you start to link, basically you create a, a half moon. And what I like to do is that I go at the outer corner of my eye and I start to sketch it out. And that gives you like that little smoke. Usually when I want to check if the effects works, I do my Melania Trump eye, you know, when she's always trying to figure out where she met you. And she's always like this. So you do that eye and you just smoke. Hmm, 
Did we met last Thanksgiving? I don't know. And now what you're gonna do is that you're gonna take a smaller brush that has a little more pointy tip. I always love to use with my skin tone purple because it basically gives like a warm, very flattering color to contour. So I use a little bit of the brown and a little bit of the purple. I basically gonna create like a line. And it's funny because when you mix the brown and the purple, you end up not having a purple color, but more of like a shadow. And that's really what I try to do during this whole process, is to recreate like human shadows and not like colors yet. Now I'm just using a blending brush just to merge all the colors together. So now I'm gonna use a very light concealer to cut my crease and I'm gonna use a very flat brush. We just did a line right there that is very dark and you wanna recreate a really sharp line under it and that is basically gonna be your new, your new crease, which is probably like at least an inch higher than my actual natural crease. Biological women have usually wider eyes, so that is gonna give you a more feminine aesthetic. And now I'm basically gonna blend the concealer with the outer corner to not have any harsh line and kinda of have like a more seamless transition. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna go back with my transition colors that I used to cut my crease, and I'm just gonna go back over it. So now that I took care of the upper part of the eye, I'm gonna start framing the under eye because not only I open my eyes on top, I really open it also on the bottom. So I'm gonna go back with my transition color and I'm gonna start to recreate a lower lash line. So you just go right there and just sketch it out. Now you look like a fool, you're in the right direction. Take a little flatter brush and I'm gonna use my purple and I'm really just gonna go over what I just did. So I usually like to do my eyeliner with a pen and just because it's faster. So you're gonna start to frame right here. Oh, you create a line like that. And I like to start with the outer corner because it's gonna allow me to control the thickness. You wanna connect that dot to the center of your eye up, up, and here, that's my trick. You have a little fold, right? So you don't wanna go in there because it's gonna be a complete mess. So you wanna stop, and then you wanna lift your head, and then go right there. You see, it looks, it doesn't look straight here, but if I open my eyes, it is straight. So now you just wanna feel the liner. All right, so now that I've done the liner, that is very dramatic, we're gonna go and put a, a white eyeliner under it and that's gonna create some extra sharpness. I like to use a liquid white eyeliner. You're just gonna go and outline right there. And then before it dries, you go with a little brush and then you just blend a little bit because you don't want to have too much of a harsh white line. I also like to do a line right there under the eye. I know I look crazy. I'm just gonna apply some mascara. I'm gonna go back over with my purple and I'm just gonna go over there and just smoke it out even more. And now that I define that white line, I am not worried to go under it right there and just smoke it all the way to the nose, you see? So I get a lot sometimes that when I'm in drag, people think that I'm a bitch or I'm not sweet or anything like that. And I'm actually a very sweet person. I just paint very severely. So don't be scared. If I'm at the club, I promise you, you can come and talk to me. You just wanna blend the line to make sure you have no harsh line at all. All right, so now we are gonna apply some black eye pencil in the waterline because I don't wanna mess up with my skin. I, I like to use my sponge and pull my cheek like this. Don't be scared to go all the way to the roots of your lashes, otherwise you're gonna have this weird line that is gonna go in between your under eye makeup and your waterline makeup. And you wanna smoke it out. I actually like to go with a very small brush and use a black eyeshadow and define a little bit more with black. 
Ooh, she's smoked out. Let me take your little blending brush. And you just smoke it out. And now we're gonna use a white eyeshadow under our eyebrow. The highlight and the and the contour is really the key to create a little bit more contrast in your drag makeup. Otherwise, you're just gonna look flat, and that's not the goal. You see the difference right here? I like to use um, a, a blush that is not too pink and not too orange, so like the perfect coral, because with my skin tone, it really helps to blend the contour and the highlights together. And I like to put it almost like where I put my contour and not too much here, because if you cover your highlight area with blush, you're gonna remove the, the space that you created with the highlight. I am obsessed with highlighting under my eye and I'm just gonna go with a brush that is a pretty flat top and I go like this. On your moustache, because trust me, the first thing that starts sweating on that face is the moustache area. Right here, under the contour. What I do for my eye is that I usually use some very light gray contacts because I feel like light eyes really gives more space for the colors to express itself. So I'm just gonna go and apply my contact. You see the difference here? You can see the purple a little more, you can see the contour a little more, and that also what makes me look like a total bitch. So I do my own lashes. Basically what I do is that I double, triple stack lashes together and then I create spikes at the culminant points of it. You're just gonna apply your glue. But I'm gonna put the lash on the liner and not follow the natural lash line. You see? So now we have so much lashes on the top that you want to add a little bit on the bottom. I basically cut tiny spikes like this and I add them on the lower part. Three spikes of lashes under your eye. You want to have the longest one in the middle and then two smaller ones on the outer corner. Right here, the last one. So you see it gives you more like a dull, kind of like creepy eye, but it gives a little bit more contrast and more texture to the eye. I use three different shades of highlights and I build basically the um, lighter and lighter as, as I go. So I start with like a pretty warm color. I use a blending brush and I just go right here, right after the blush and right before the eye makeup and I just go boop. And then as I go with the leftover on my brush, I start to blend it out. And then you also want to go under the brow bow, a little bit on top of it. And then I use a very white one, but I really just go on the center, because that's way too light for my skin tone. So now that I've done this, I'm going to actually accentuate the contour of my nose and then start to highlight the center of my nose. So I use a brow eyeshadow to create the contour of my nose. So I use a blending brush like so, and then I take a brown that is not too dark, and I'm just gonna go up, completely erase that area. You use a blending brush, you blend it out, and we're gonna use the contour, and then I'm just gonna go boop. You basically just have to do your lips. I like to use a coffee type of color, because it really creates the shadow and to expand the lip shape. You're gonna use a blending brush and just go. I like to use different shades of nude to really build up the contour. So I'm gonna start with the darker one. Apply it all over. Now I'm gonna use the middle color. So now we start to have an ombre. And you can always use your blending brush and go between the colors. And now I'm just gonna use a very light color and just go right here. This is like a very classic retro 90s runway. I try to apply it to my drawn of art. So I'm gonna go put on my wig, my accessories, my outfits, and I'll be back. And voila, this is the makeup that I did for my cape look on the runway. I was paying homage to Joanna Vark, Linda Evangelista, very 90s Mugler runway. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned some tricks or two on how I do my makeup, and I cannot wait to see you on the road. Bye. Subscribe to the VH1 YouTube channel so you don't miss any of RuPaul's Drag Race.